Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Without a doubt, I think this is going to be the biggest fishing show in the world. We cover all sorts of fishing, all round fishing, all over the world. This time I'm going somewhere I don't even know where I'm going. A secret, a surprise, a mystery, a voyage into the, the unknown. I don't know where it is. No, I don't know where it is. Going to find out pretty soon though. Oh, is it going to be okay? Well, I've got some Mike with me, our film editor. Well, if I get lost, at least he can help me find my way home. It could be scary. And in this episode, it's something of a mystery tour because our guide, Paul Harris, who runs a guest house in Adrigal, over in Ireland on the Bear Peninsula, is taking us to this secret, absolutely red hot rock spot that nobody knows about. It's another secret. We have one big, big problem, folks. We were late filming something else, me and Mike, and he's just told us we might miss the cable car. Now, Paul drives very fast on the Irish roads, normally. He's now told us, yeah! we've got to really push it to get there. And I'll tell you what, I just heard a bang. Was it a puncture? No, it's Paul Harris's vehicle in front breaking the damn sound barrier. I'm doing quite a lot of miles an hour, I won't tell you what, and I've got trouble keeping up with him. Oh dear, it's making me worried. Oh, oh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> and he broke the mic. Is the mic falling off? Was Mike falling off the camera and Mike's falling out the car? He's going like a bat out of... I'll tell you what folks, don't bother about Top Gear having a... having a car test, this is a one! Oh no, somebody coming the other way! Oh, breathe in! <gasps> Oh, that was a close one. Nearly new wing mirrors there. I'll tell you what, this place had better be worth fishing because my poor old car's getting battered to death on these roads. I've been going over to Ireland for nearly 40 years and each time I'm constantly in awe of the breathtaking scenery. The southwest corner of the country is even more spectacular and the fishing can be amongst the finest in Europe. What if I thought that that life-threatening drive following Mr. Harris was something? Think again, he's got me on a cable car going across to Dursey Island and we're only about 400 feet up so I think I need oxygen. Thanks a lot Paul. This is a really fabulous place to fish, a unique place. It's the only cable car in the whole of Ireland and we're heading out to Dursey Island where there's only about 20 people still living here. It's completely untouched fishing. Nobody comes out here except probably half a dozen anglers a year. So this is the place to come for virgin fishing. This cable car was not my usual stand of Austrian skiing resorts. This, well, square box I appeared to be asked to step into was capable of carrying, well, wait for it, four humans and a cow. While it looked like something that takes people over to Alcatraz prison, it was in fact quite spectacular, with views over a pristine Atlantic Ocean. No, it didn't make me feel any better, knowing it was only a short but high ride in a 4-6 gale. A short distance maybe, but it was still a very long drop into that clear blue water. Dursey Island is one of the furthest outposts of land you can get to in Southwest Ireland. As they say, next stop, America. Luckily for me, the cable doesn't stretch that far. Once on the island, two of our party totally disregarded the advice of shore fishing guy Paul Harris, who said some good fishing was always to be found on the local tiny harbour. What does he know? He only lives there. But, well, not on the island, obviously. But we decided on a route march with tackle and camera equipment to a deep water mark that was shown on the chart. Listen, this Dursey Island is well worth exploring even without fishing rods. The views are absolutely amazing. Of course, part of the fun of rock fishing is that you always end up taking more tackle than you are ever going to need. Huge ravines that were split away from the mainland dropping right down into the open ocean. 
each corner you turned, it made it seem as though you had reached yet another fisherman's Shangri-La. Eventually we found a route down through those jagged rocks to the rock fishing platforms and even though the wind was howling, we had found a fishable spot. Sure guy Paul then gave us a good tip about the huge depths in front of us. Okay, here we are on a typical deep water mark on, uh, off Dursey Island. Just cast out, I've got about an ounce and a half, ounce and three quarters of lead on there. And uh, as you know, I'm not doing anything, I've cast out, I'm still waiting for it to sink. That will take about 30 seconds to get to the bottom. And that's what you wear, that's where you wanted to be, on the bottom. That's where those big pollock are. And it's most important to, to wait, be patient. Okay, there you go, line stopped peeling off, so we're on the bottom and we can start the retrieve. These, uh, these pollock live in the kelp, around the kelp. Now if you're sort of losing the odd lure, don't worry about it. That's, that's, that's where the fish are. If you're not losing the odd one, you're not fishing in the right place. These soft plastic lures, what are they costing? About 50p each, so it's not much to lose really. Um, but the value of uh, fishing there means big fish and big rewards. Lots. I dropped the bait right down the edge. I've got a conger on, and he's got me in the rocks. It's not a very big one, but a strap one. I don't know how I'm going to get him out. It's a suicide mission over the edge, so he might win. Alas, my conger eel found the sanctuary of the rocky reef in the depths below me. But, undeterred, Mike kept casting his sidewinder lure until he eventually found success. A nice polyp from a spectacular rock platform over the water. Now that's totally untouched fishing. By now the gusts of winds were freaky and we were actually in danger of being blown straight off the rocks. And look at the weird cloud formations caused by those high upper atmosphere winds. If they don't look like the Starship Enterprise, I'll eat my sidewinder lure. It may look tranquil, but freaky gusts of 70 mile an hour winds made those fishing platforms precarious. And a 40 foot drop into the cold Atlantic Ocean was not on my list of must do's. So we decided to return to Paul's original spot, the tiny harbour wall which might just give us some shelter from that howling wind. Yes, another route march back to base camp, and on one trip we actually weighed what I was carrying in camera and fishing equipment, a staggering 60 pounds of kit, which is standard weight on an SAS training exercise. Thank goodness for military service. Bring it back, I say. On week-long holidays with a fishing rod, I fished for the entire seven days without even seeing another angler. Now one thing that you'll never run out of if you get down at low water on any sort of rock mark you think, oh dear, I'm running out of bait. No worms, no mackerel, no squid, no crabs, no whatever. Always, you got some of these. I'm... I'd say the wind's stronger today, yes. Oh, limpets. Now they're not slipper limpets, they're just plain limpets here. You can get the rocks and boulders on the edges of keys. Now if you tap them, they will immediately clamp down and suction on that and be really, really hard. You have to get them without putting any vibration on the rock. Get your knife ready, blunt knife better, pop under, Right, I just leave her away, and there they are. There's a the suction. I'm just going to show you this one. So there, there is it close up. Let me come out of the way and show you. This is a very, very good bait as a backup for, for, for RAS. It's 
I wouldn't say it's a great bait for everything else, but for wrasse fishing, if you're on the rocks, you're running out of bait, scoop these out, be very careful. I'm using a sharp filleting knife. Do not use a sharp filleting knife. There you go, look at that. And also, if you're fishing for mullet, you can chop these up and use pieces of them for the mullet and for chum, you know, for like ground bait to attract it. And what you do is you chop it all up, mix it with pieces of sand or gravel or beach or dirt. Dirt will do, bits of seaweed as well. And there it is, there's a little juice. Put the shell in with the ground bait as well. Toss the lot in the water. And this, I'd leave that foot on there, it's called the foot. Just leave that on there so you can also split that down and make two small baits where you just hook it through here and leave that black, black piece show in there. And you can see, so there you go. Never run out of bait. And I suppose, if you got caught and you missed the ferry, the cable car, the boat, the plane home off wherever island you're on or rock you're on, you could eat those. Ooh, yuck! But good bait. Paul's Harbour on the island at least meant we had a flat platform to fish from. And I spotted some mullet cruising on the inside, so quickly set about cutting up our bait. Squid, sandhill, mackerel, all mashed with bread in a desperate effort to salvage something with a catcher grade mullet. Okay, we've got a Kong on guys, on a mullet rod. Just look down there if you can see him before we lose him. Size 10 freshwater hook. He's thrashing around, he's in the weed, he's on a size 10, and I think it's a one way ticket. But you never know. I'm going to dive around the other side. If I can keep his head up out of that kelp. That's that main bit of kelp I just want to get him out of. Isn't he? What pound line have you got him on? <laughs> <laughs> now he's kelp. Get him! Yes, yes! Oh! <laughs> no, no, no! Is he still in? Yes! <laughs> Come on! Oh, yes! Go on! Go on, right, there's yes. his tail, get his oh, tail! No. Yes, yes. Oh, no. No. <laughs> yes, guys, oh, swam in! No. Hey! Come on, Are you married? No. <laughs> I want your children. <laughs> Look oh, at no. that! You <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Go, get him up here! Come across a cable car. Let's just see this tackle here. Hold on, what have we got here? It's a mullet rod. It's a little storm fixed ball wheel laying down there trying to catch a mullet. Going mad with this awful, god awful wind that's here. Never come to this island, it's just a wind night. <laughs> and look at this conger. There it is, split shot. Actually, it's quite a nice conger, the one I lost on the rocks earlier. I, it's not, <laughs> it's not actually. That's... It's a it's a pretty good conger. How can you believe that? And he's eaten now, got no chance to get my hook back. The hook, believe it or not, folks, a size 10 freshwater hook. 10 pound line, pitch black line and a pitch black conga. And this was caught, how was this caught visibly? Oh, visibly, first time he just snapped the line, he's off again. I'm gonna beam up. This was caught. We saw him swimming. I'm gonna claim all the credit, but I think my son Michael actually saw him, didn't you Mike? No, Paul saw him, thought he was a mullet. We, we were mullet fishing, thought it was a very, very long mullet. And it turns into a 
very nice conga. Possibly the first ever visually caught conga. It may well be. If I'm claiming it as the first visually caught conga, Paul. <laughs> Not that I'm led by anybody's suggestions, of course. Look Beautiful fish. Let's get this one back. With a bit of luck, you'll see it slide off underwater. <laughs> We've seen Dursey Island, fantastic scenery, a mystery tour from Paul, well worth coming over. The wind is absolutely howling, it's a false eight or more, we need to get blown over. If it wasn't for that light tackle conga, man we'd have been struggling. I'll tell you what, I'm struggling, I'm like this still, I can't take any more, I've asked them to take me home in the cable car, we've got to go fishing somewhere more quiet. A mullet rod, a conga, in the daylight, sight fishing, actually seeing it take the bait. I mean, that's unbelievable. I've never seen that 45 years of fishing. I just hope that cable car doesn't rust out yet.